Hi, welcome. It's me, Dr. Carla Tadek, and you're watching another episode of my live chat discussions here on my fantastic YouTube channel on cysts and lipoma removal. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Carla Tadek, your host for today. This is our global question and answer session where we take questions from the audience on general medical health topics, specifically focusing on skincare. Remember, if you've got questions on cysts or lipoma removal, then do reach out to us at lipomacyst.com. There you'll be able to find for all your skin complaints. If you want literature on how to keep your skin great, then drcolortech.com is your port of call. Remember, do subscribe, remember to comment, share with your friends. You can also find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Welcome, everybody. Hope you're all in and enjoying yourself and happy. So as you all know, we've been doing our Face Cyst series, a collection of videos that focus on lipomas and cysts of the face. Uh, and that has included mucosils. Last episode, we diverged a little bit and we treated this infected cyst on this poor lady's shoulder. I'm sure you've all seen it, the infected cyst from Wednesday. If you go to my Instagram account, you'll be able to see the post-op review and what that looks like. There's a lot of discussion about packing and non-packing. We chose not to pack. We washed it out with a disinfectant and curetted the inside. Uh, and that saves a hell of a lot of time because the packing can take several weeks that needs to be replaced every two days. And that process can drag out for six weeks. So it's really inconvenient for the patient. But if you curette it and clean it properly, you're able to get great results straight away. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about that. Put your comments down below. Remember to hit the like button. Hit that like button on 11 likes, 12 likes. Keep that going. Now, in the next episode, we're going to be doing our lipoma. Lipoma, a face cyst lipoma. Now, this chap, uh, he's, come, he's come from Brazil, and he's got this lipoma stuck in his face, in his cheek. So it has been there, I think, for a very, very long time. So uh, getting out was a little bit difficult. The great news is it's a twin cam production, so you get to see different angles. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. Uh, what else we've got to say? Uh, that's it, really. Um, hope you're all staying safe from coronavirus. Uh, wherever you are in the world, face mask, your pillow, then you can go to Teespring and you can purchase your, 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 uh, your, uh, your equipment there and you can get that. And all, all the proceeds go to charity for that. So let's have a look. Let's scroll up and say hello. Let's see who we've got in the house. So Sherry S., She's the first person. She's on the podium. She gets pole position. Christiana in at number two. She gets second position. Well done, you two. Who's in at third? Ron the Burke. Good afternoon from Dexter in Georgia. Storming here. Hurricane. Wow. Yep. Uh, and if you're in the States, if you're in Georgia or Texas or Florida, I know that it's tornado season and hurricane season. I know that tropical storms have landed on the, uh, on the east coast of Florida. Remember to stay safe. Uh, wherever you are and obviously if you are in an infected area of coronavirus then don't forget to maintain social distancing wear your masks wash your hands and uh, stay safe let's see what we've got here gail gail from new jersey welcome caroline steed she's at home and she's doing well jill burton's in the house sherry is from virginia and she's getting ready for the hurricane susanna is here susanna Petzel. dr sarah is in the house our resident orthodontic surgeon. So you know who Dr. Sarah is, remember? If you haven't been to her YouTube channel to find out about your dental hacks, then go check that out. You can also find her on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And I'm sure a lot of you have questions, so you can chat to her in the dialogue. Lisa from New York, welcome. Chris Badger from Canada. Kim is saying hi. Lindsay Wilson from Ayrshire in Scotland. Welcome, Lindsay. Joyce from Cleveland. Kim from Oregon. Rhonda, it seems that the video pops a few seconds after you start talking. Is it just me? I think there's a bit of a delay. You know, the Wi-Fi isn't as strong as maybe it should be. Um, and we've got a lot of people in the office today who are watching and they're gonna be joining us for a chat. We've got some surprise guests coming in a little bit later. Yes, talking to you, young man. <laughs> okay, who else do we have in the house? Mary Wright from Vermont. Sylvia uh, Malagrino from Brazil. Welcome, Sylvia. Uh, I know we've got a lot of Brazilian uh, friends. Uh, stay safe if you're in Brazil. Jennifer, welcome. Rhonda Burke, how are you doing? Bridget Schumacher, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sula Lally, hello, doctor. Uh, from London, love your videos. Thanks for the hard work. Thank you, Sue. Marty, 
uh, from Merino Valley in California. What is the solution you use to rinse out infections? Peroxide wash, depends what you need. Uh, Caroline Tom Tom, welcome. Lisa is saying hi. Sid G, welcome back. Like this, good, good stuff, good stuff. Sandra Goody, good evening, Dr. Sadek. Hope you're having a good weekend. Can't wait for the next video. It's a lipoma. So I know a lot of people aren't keen on lipomas, but you know, we've got to cover a different variety of products. So lipoma is going to be our next video. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Jen Norbury, welcome. Gail Sharp, how are you doing? Justin saying, how are you doing? Alessandra Testa from Sao Paulo, welcome on board. Viv Lee, howdy. I want a pillow, says Jen Norbury. Get yourself a pillow. Um, how often should you change your face mask? That's Sandra, Sandra's question. Look, I think manufacturer advice is uh, three hours, but you've got to double check with what your manufacturer says. Uh, if the face mask becomes soggy, it's no longer giving that filtration. Uh, it's lost its function, so that needs to be uh, dried out. And a three-day turnover, so you might have a couple of masks and use them over and over again. Uh, hello from Donna in Illinois. She's loving it. Welcome on board. Kimitha Z. I'm sure you've seen some remarkable things. However, share with us the oddest, quirkiest patients you've ever had. <laughs> well, we sure had a few of those. Um, so who else we've got here? Uh, USA, California, Deborah Ronka, welcome. Just saying, I love how you wave goodbye. It tickles me every time. And that's Ellen from South Carolina. Welcome, Mirka Kulit from Poland. Welcome, Poland. How are you doing? Uh, went out for the first time in six months, just one mile away. My GP surgery, that's Caroline TomTom. -Tom. Stay safe, Caroline M. Hello from New Mexico. Welcome, welcome. Christy Halliday, Dr. Sedek. What's that cool ship model behind you? That is the illustrious Queen Elizabeth II. <laughs> to scale, to scale. It, it's not going to float, but uh, yeah, it's there. QE2, Cunard's flagship cruise liner from 1970 to 1980. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lisa Gian Turco from Riley in... Uh, where are you from? Where's NC? Is that new? Where's NC? What's the abbreviation for a US state of NC? Help me out here, guys. Um, Laura Ganesh from Pembroke. We don't get to the 50 likes. No more videos. North Carolina. North Carolina, NC. North Carolina. I'm getting that through. Awesome. Alessandra from Brazil. Welcome. Uh, how can you tell a cyst from a lipoma before the surgery? Well, this is interesting because we've got a radiologist with us today and he'll be telling us the radiological findings of uh, cysts and um, lipomas in different parts of the body. He'll also be telling us all sorts of weird and wonderful things about imaging of the body, including the brain. But when you examine a lipoma, it tends to be much more mushy. It's got a very soft consistency, it's very mobile, while a cyst is firm, it's hard, you know, fat isn't very pliable. Imagine it like a butter. You know, hard butter in the fridge, I would say, as opposed to like a soft chickadee fat. There we go. It's always good to have some food analogies. Um, Laura Ganesh is a lipoma a product. What do you mean? Mike Cole from Cooper Creek in Alaska. Wow. Uh, Kim saying, Alice here from Ohio. Welcome, Alice. Laura Ganesh, how are you doing? Renita Tillman, how are you doing? And uh, who else? Sula Lali, welcome on board. Dr. Sarah, when are we going to see you again with Dr. Sadek in our live? You together are amazing. I think we're going to have that today. I think we're going to have we're going to have Dr. Cena, our resident radiologist. He's going to be talking about um, what it looks like on the big screen. We've got Dr. Sarah, orthodontics is going to be joining us. So stay tuned. Next, uh, they're going to be, they're just getting ready. They're just getting their makeup and all their equipment ready. They're getting their questions ready. If you've got dentistry questions, put it down. If you've got questions about any kind of imaging, put it down. The docs are waiting. They're in the green room. They're going to come over and they're going to start going live with all of us. So we got a big jamboree. Nicole Daniels from New Zealand, Sid G. Does that go for reusable masks too? Yes, it does. You can reuse the masks even if they are reusable. They're not sterile. They're not single use leave them, dry them, you can go ahead and use them a couple of days later. Sandra Goody, who do you keep looking at? I keep looking at the green room behind me. Get, you know, there's a lot of action because today we've got a jamboree, we've got two guests. 
We've got Dr. Sarah from Dr. Sarah's Orthodontic Smile. She'll be joining us. And we've got Dr. Sina, our radiologist consultant. He's going to be joining us as well. Uh, Marty, how are you doing? Laura Ganesh, uh, I personally like the wave, a little wave there. Good evening, Dr. Khaled from Connecticut. That's Kelly. Marshall Thompson, Dr. K, looking forward to the video. Got a cup of tea and I love it. Hope that's one of my mugs that you're drinking it in. If you haven't got a mug, remember all research, all money goes to cancer research. Michelle, uh, Dean Mead, good afternoon from the Gold Coast of Australia. Wow, this is a truly international community we have today. Uh, Margaret Brace is, did I build the ship model? No, I didn't. It's made of, <clears throat> I don't know if you can hear it, but it's made of solid, solid gold. <laughs> no, it's brass. <laughs> um, Lisa from North Carolina. Is it Prince of Zam, our special guest? Sid G, no, Prince of Zam isn't joining us today. He stays behind the camera. Or is it a she? But no Prince of Zam today. We've got Dr. Sina and Dr. Sara in the house. Wonder, five, are there any ingrowing hairs in your pops? Occasionally we do. Occasionally, occasionally yeah, we do, we do. Caroline Steed, how are you doing? Laura Ganesh, palliative care nurse here. Love the videos. Well, you're doing great work, Laura. Keep up the good work. Mayra, my son has something on his finger. Not sure if it's a cyst uh, or what they froze it and it hasn't helped. Very painful. Breathe doing. Love it. Makeup from the green room. Yeah, absolutely. They're all having... It's a real studio here. It's not my living room. It's a real studio, fully functioning. Edmund Washington, how are you doing there? Uh, Alessandra, I saw you together in a live... And your face made me laugh and loud here in Brazil. Maybe Dr. Sarah one day could answer the questions your fans have about you. <laughs> I like it. That's like a plot twist. So she answers questions that you want to know about me from her. I see. I see. Potentially, I could see that working. Okay, Sherry, I make masks. How many layers are good? I usually do two ply of fabrics and uh, fusible non-woven interfaces. To be honest, I don't know the exact um, mask material composition because they have different um, qualities. You've got dust masks, the base model, and then you've got your, your, your FB2s, your FB3s, your respirator masks. So there are different levels of, um, of, of product design, different levels of protection. So not all masks are born the same. Some masks are more superior. So let's move the chair right next to me over here. So let's see who we've got. Let's hit, let, while we're waiting, let's, let's hit the like button. We've got 50, 50 people watching, we've got 33 likes. With every, let's get, let's get to 35 likes and we're gonna bring in our guest. Let's make some space, guys. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Dr. Cena, welcome. Dr. Cena. You see me, hello. Let's bring it in, hello. let's have a look. Dr. Cena <laughs> and, and Dr. Sarah. Hello. Welcome. Welcome on board, everybody. How's your week been, Dr. Cena? Thank you for having us. Um, it, it's been okay. Uh, busy. The weather's been quite good in London, yeah, so we've yeah. been trying to enjoy a bit of weather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. It's true. <laughs> Dr. Sarah, how busy have you been? Because you've been very busy with your, uh, your work. Yes, yeah. So I've been very busy at practice um, in dentistry where um, I'd say we're probably back to sort of 75% capacity at the moment. So we're getting quite busy. Wow. And is it business as usual? Do you guys, are you guys still working the same kind of things or have you made workplace adjustments to accommodate Corona? We've had to make a lot of adjustments. So the whole kind of uh, flow of patients into hospitals, how we yeah. scan, yeah, um, um, yeah um, everything has had to change. We've got new kind of working arrangements from home, et cetera. So, working from uh, home. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Certain sessions from home. Yeah. Dr. Sarah, what about yourself? Are you, is, it, is it business as usual for fillings? It's, and drillings? Yeah, so it's not business as usual in dentistry. So um, we have something called aerosol generating procedures, um, AGPs. And currently there are restrictions on AGPs within dentistry. So although we can do them, we have to leave what we call a fallow period, which is where we evacuate the room for a period of one hour. Um, so no one can enter the room after one hour if we've used um, any drilling or produced any aerosols. And this is because um, in theory, these particles could contain COVID. So after the hour, we can then re-enter the room and um, clean the room. So obviously this does leave a lot of downtime in practice. Um, so a lot of surgeries are just um, quite simply postponing any procedures that do produce aerosols because of this. Um, but even just with routine examinations, we are leaving gaps between our patients. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Look, let's see uh, if we've got any questions uh, from uh, the audience. Let's scroll up. Uh, let's scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Uh, so, looking forward to the video. Uh, best toothpaste when you have sensitive teeth? Okay, very so good question. Very good question. So, not all toothpastes are the same when it comes to sensitivity. So, sensitive toothpaste such as Sensodyne and Colgate sensitive, they do contain um, particular chemicals that help see seal any exposed dentinal tubules that will cause increased sensitivity. So I do recommend to any patient that is suffering from tooth sensitivity to switch to Sensodyne toothpaste or Colgate sensitive. Um, they're probably my two favorite toothpastes that when it comes to um, tooth sensitivity. There you go, very interesting. Good very tips. interesting, yeah, good tips. Mm -hmm. um, Core Smith from gorgeous New York. Angela saying, hi, good evening, Dr. Sedek. How are you? Loving the haircut, not too short, <laughs> just right. That's Joanna. <laughs> uh, Jean Mullins from South Africa, welcome. Belinda from Cologne, you're really spoiling us this week. Two pops for the price of one on Friday, lots of Instagram posts, and now special guests. <laughs> you guys are worth it. Elizabeth Busby, how are you doing? Uh, let's have a look. Bridget saying, great to see you all. Sid G saying, hi. Lisa saying, no social distancing. We, well, yeah. what, how do we how would we say about that? I mean, we're, we're all part of the same bubble. Same bubble. Same, same social same bubble. bubble. <laughs> same social bubble. Same social bubble. There we go. Same social bubble. Um, let's scroll. Let's scroll up. Let's scroll up. Hi uh, everyone. So hello. Sandra. Yeah, everybody say hello. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. hi, Doctor China, and Doctor Sarah. <laughs> hello, Doctor China. Is. Sina. S I N A. I <laughs> say China. I like it. That's... Sina. Sina. Yeah. yeah. Um, from my middle name. Enfield, we should have more live chats and more guests. Uh, guests. Thank you, Sandra. You're always good to have the Enfield contingency joining us. Dr. Sina, yes. yes. So, also agree. She's lovely. Sidji, do you have air purifiers in your practice? Um, I guess that's for you, or is that for you? Do you have, what is the air system in like an MRI? If I'm going to go for an M imaging, mm -hmm. what precautions do you have? Because a lot, of, a lot of patients have concerns about going to hospital and they might catch something, but what have you set in place to protect patients? So we are doing a similar thing that Dr. Sarah was talking about in that uh, with spaced patients. So uh, we can't, uh, first of all, uh, uh, we've got a clean part of the hospital where uh, there are no inpatients being scanned and it's dedicated to outpatients uh, where people have previously been and the scan is all being cleaned in between patients and a certain amount of time allowed for, yeah, yeah. Uh, as, yeah as a space between patients to make sure that because yeah. you're off air in the in the green room yeah. you were mentioning what is it between aerosol you have the the followed or the something fallow period fallow yeah. period, yeah, so fallow that's period. The time when yeah. we leave yeah we leave the surgery yeah. for an hour but we have additional precautions into that as well as that so similar to seeing a patients get screened their temperature gets checked then we go through a checklist with them um and we give them a mask as soon as they enter the surgery and so yeah, lots of precaution you get an alcohol gel so there are lots of things that we do to um reduce the risk of anyone contracting covid within the surgery or within the patients in this country it's just been, well it's been compulsory for a little while but everybody in a hospital working or visiting has to wear a mask yeah yeah you know. absolutely mm -hmm. now are you getting regularly tested for staff yep yeah yeah, yeah. so Absolutely. Depending on your profession, so surgeons, mm. etc., are getting tested more than mm. yeah, yeah. mere radiologists, but they're yeah. all getting yeah. tested. Yeah, dentists aren't yeah. really getting tested either. <laughs> okay. So Lisa's saying, Dr. Sarah, G, Orange G's welcoming us from Houston. Hello. Welcome, Hi. Orange G. Good evening, Dr. Sina. Good evening, Dr. Sarah. If Sarah is your sister, we both call ourselves Dr. Sadek. <laughs> there can only be one Dr. Sadek. <laughs> this couch is only big mind. enough. The couch is only big enough for one Dr. Sadek. I'll sacrifice Sadek. my Dr. Sadek for today. Jane Hall from Hailing Island, welcome. Uh, Mary Wright, Dr. Sadek, how, Dr. Khaled, how do you do with pylonidal cysts? I tend to leave that for the colorectal surgeons. Yeah, uh, that's how I deal with it. Sandra Goody, <laughs> it looks like your brother. Hmm. It does. It does, because we are brothers. Both good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Christina, how can you tell from a scan if it's a lipoma or a cyst? Ah. So that's for you, young man. So p part of that is, obviously, due to, um, uh, that people can work it out um, uh, in terms of a clinical examination, but there are things you can tell. So, for example, when you're ultrasounded, 
they've got different consistency so they um you get uh, different echo textures when you do ultrasounds and you can see which ones are more cystic more watery inside which ones are more solid also in various we're kind of imaging modalities so if you go for cts or mris etc um if you want to get really geeky and technical with mrs with the different sequences etc all of these compounds it could be yep. a, a lipoma or a cyst. On, on an average week, how many cysts are you MRIing or scanning? So to be perfectly honest, it, uh, we don't scan them because it's mostly a, uh, a, a superficial problem. I'm yeah. a new radiologist yeah. by training anyway and by yeah. work, so I'm mostly scanning brains and spines. Yeah. Um, but we see a lot of lipomas and cysts on the really? scalp. Really? You see them in, can, can you get them like into underneath the skull so lipomas you can and you can actually get well by definition cysts are just a little yeah. cavity of fluid lipomas are just fatty deposits and you can get lipomas anyway you can get it in your lining of the brain wow. you can you can get it yeah wow. in your spine oh. anywhere in your tummy wow you name it everything that happens on the outside can happen on well the i inside know that too. fat can grow anywhere because yeah. in lockdown i've certainly <laughs> had fat grow everywhere exactly <laughs> right let's have a look what's in the house uh, Jill Burton saying, hi, Lisa Gianturco, love this guest segment, love you all. Tina Summers from Dublin, Ireland. Uh, Bridget Schumacher saying, do you, see, do you see a lot of scans on the cornea in lung scarring? Uh, a lot of scans on the cornea in lung scarring. That is no. let me just see if I can, uh, it's a lot of scans on the cornea in lung scarring. Oh, with COVID you mean probably. Do you? Uh, yeah, I'm maybe, maybe it's a yeah, typo. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah you, you can you can see lung changes in patients with COVID. Um, um, we don't quite at the moment. There's not enough data to say how much of the changes are uh, permanent scarring or not. But kind of extrapolating data from previous um, uh, cold virus, etc., it looks like a certain percentage of people might get a little bit of long-term scarring. Mm, um, mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Let's scroll down. Question from Christine Wilson is in capital letters with two exclamation marks. I had a, a lymph, lymphangioma surgically removed from my neck and I have lymphedema in my legs. Uh, might the two be somehow related? Ooh, what do you reckon? Lymphedema post lymphangioma removal. It depends, I guess, in the neck. So it's I, quite high up, isn't I it? I think it's difficult unless we talk about a systemic disease um, and I have to consult the literature for mm, that mm. Um, um, lymph, um, lymphedema in the legs would be hard to connect to lymph, uh, mm. lymph with second mm. lymph in the arms, lymphedema yeah. in like the arms breast cancer and breast cancer etc yeah. um, uh, as for legs uh, if it's true lymphedema because obviously it's loosely used mm, mm. and people can get edema yeah. generalized edema yeah. But yeah they call lymphedema yeah so you've got to make sure that it's a lymphedema in the legs you typically get dependent edema because you know if you're sitting in a chair on a flight when you come off you notice your feet are a little bit more swollen because your body's having to pump its blood against a column of fluid and gravity and so the pressure of that column just causes water to seep out in between neck surgery and lower limb swelling so but there may be but we don't we can't see it uh, Joyce Bauer, what kind of doctor is Dr. Cena? What kind of doctor are you, Cena? I'm a new radiologist. So I'm a radiologist and then I subspecialize in neuro. So brains and spines, scans. Brains and spines, brains and spines. Uh, Kamitha, best advertisement for a dentist. I love Dr. Sara's <laughs> smile. Oh, thank you very Brilliant. much. <laughs> That's very kind. <laughs> Dr. Sarah, where are you based? So I'm based in London. Yeah, um, based, I'm, in I, yeah based in London in Chelsea. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's scroll down. Let's see. How often should you go to the dentist? I go every six months. That's a really good question, actually. So every six months is very good. Um, current guidelines in the UK do state that every year is okay, provided the dentist feels that this will be good for you. So for example, some people um, are more prone to tooth decay and gum problems, in which case the dentist would advise them to return more often. But if your oral health is generally good and you're not sort of um, too susceptible to tooth decay and gum disease, then one year should be enough. Hmm. Question for Dr. Cena. Sherry says, I had an MRI many years ago, but they wouldn't give me anything in writing. That I do have a brain. What, uh, what, what would you say to that? Um, 
I think as, uh, you're entitled to your report. So if some, if um, you can always ask for it, um, and then they're always obliged to give you the report. Um, so if you just write to them, you can even ask for your images as well. Um, they may just charge you a little um, administrative fee of mm -hmm. copying it onto a, something, a CD or DVD or something. But um, in, at least in this country, you can ask for all your imaging and all your reports at any point. And it's been fun. Cor Smith, thank you, Dr. Cena. Thank you, Dr. Sarah. Answer my questions regarding protocol, dentistry, and radiology. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, let's scroll down. So, G, Dr. Cena, what do you do for patients like me who get really nervous during an MRI or CAT scan? Nervous patients. So it's, it is a major issue with patients getting claustrophobic. Um, there is a bit of a difference, both uh, historically, because scans are becoming a lot patient friendlier mm -hmm. the donuts are getting bigger so they're not as mm -hmm. uh, as um uh, yeah claustrophobic as they used to be with cts they're very quick these days because they just scan the whole body in minutes and the donuts are quite big so hopefully you shouldn't feel too bad in cts yeah. um and they can image your chest etc in 30 seconds mm -hmm. or so uh, with MRs, it's still a little bit uncomfortable. We'll try and make it as comfortable as possible for patients by giving them, because the scanners make a lot of noises, so they're given um, um, headphones, you can play music through them, um, etc. Um, you can ask for sedation, uh, but it needs to obviously be worked mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And kind of as a last resort, there are also open scanners for patients who are most claustrophobic, which is... A little bit of a misnomer they're not quite open but just a little bit patient friendlier mm -hmm. because the donuts are bigger yeah. etc um and you sacrifice a little bit of image quality for patient comfort it's really good we do get a lot actually a lot of um, anxiety around getting into the tunnel yeah. the noise the tight space do you guys ever use like a sedation we have got both sedation and general anesthetic lists. It's wow. obviously a last resort um, and you try and not, because obviously there are risk factors associated mm -hmm. with anything, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. a general anesthetic. Yeah. So you try and keep it as a, as a last resort thing, mm -hmm. but obviously if somebody needs it, um, you can, um, you can it's really good. do it on. Really great, really great yeah. audience questions, aren't they? Absolutely. They are very really good. Really good. Really good. Quite switched on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in my case, uh, the radiologist would look for a, <laughs> a priest with ex uh, exorcism for a fireman to deal with my brain. I think that's, I think that's a that's side, all side, chat. Brains, it's a side <laughs> chat going on there. Uh, let's have a look. Marion Beanie has donated to us. Four pound nine nine. Very kind of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, you Marion. Um, so Vivli, I know you're a radiologist. But from imaging, what would it look like an encephalitis on an image? So with an, I'll call it encephalitis mm. just because I'm used to calling yeah. it. But it, both terms are correct and yeah. you can use it interchangeably yeah. um, in case I slip up and use both <laughs> terms in the middle. <laughs> but um, an encephalitis is basically inflammation of the brain. And there's a whole gamut of things that can cause an encephalitis from an in infection, so viruses, etc., uh, to things like autoimmune, your body kind of causing inflammation of your own brain, parasites, etc. Um, in, in terms of a lot of it is viral encephalitis, mm -hmm. and a, in a lot of cases, it's not actually the virus itself, although some of it is the virus, but it's almost a, they call it a para infectious phenomenon mm -hmm. of the body's immune system dealing with the virus that is causing you the inflammation mm -hmm. of the brain. Mm -hmm. So, in most cases, they, you will be given a course of antivirals, etc., and that will clear off. But it's the body's reaction mm. to the virus that is causing the inflammation. It's, that's in sort of like the immediate stage you'll be able to see the nerves being inflamed. Yeah. If you went to scan them like a year later, would there be any like residual change that you could identify? So in the vast majority, um, the patients get well and mm. you can't see mm. any lasting mm. damage. Um, but obviously, in some cases, if the inflammation is too great or you don't manage to treat it early enough, you can sometimes end up really? with some brain really? damage. Right. And that might lead to, like in Vivli's case, ME. Potentially. Again, ME is a very poorly uh, understood um, condition. But uh, with ME, um, um, th th there is this theory that it's, it's, a, it's basically a virus mm -hmm. And as a power infectious phenomenon, you end up with ME, uh, with kind of fatigue, fatigability, mm -hmm. um, 
Um, and it's one of those great research areas that there's a lot of research going on to try and better understand yeah, the yeah, subject. Yeah. yeah. And then and more pertinent today, you know, COVID-19, a lot of long term. So, for example, effect, absolutely. And with COVID-19, you may have seen this. So a lot of the initial um, complaints were breathing, kind of things with respiratory problems. And as patients ended up on ITUs for yeah, weeks yeah. and weeks as they are coming out of like uh, wow wow okay let's 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 scroll up let's have a look i mean this live chat is great isn't it I mean, so denise uh bonk is saying uh just watch one of my cats have stared down with a squirrel in our driveway the squirrel got within <laughs> one foot of our cat thanks for that thanks for that i thought that'd be a really good question we need a live cast some, of that yeah absolutely send us some photos <laughs> um let's have a look let's see if we've got any questions in the house let's have a look sid g thank you for nodding mike cole um saying hi cara it's a scan to text uh you're eating and um, the brain okay thank you for that let's have a look vividly the registrar showed me the scan and the information and then he ran out of the room okay <laughs> thanks for that <laughs> uh salu lalis thank you dr cena for answering our questions would you please come again they wanted to come again. I would love to. Well, we will we'll do that. To. We will definitely, definitely do that. Let's have a look. Uh, let's scroll up. So, oh, here we go. Dr. Sarah, I'm 76 as reference. For years, the English were notorious with bad teeth. When did this turn around? Approximately, when did people in a, when did people around the world start? When is when is the birth of yeah. modern dentistry? That's true. Yeah. So the, we won't focus on yeah. the English having bad teeth. Yeah, but what is the global got a point. movement? She's got a point. So the English are very notorious for having bad teeth. The Americans are notorious mm. for having good teeth. And the Americans have always been much more advanced in their dental care, even in orthodontics, which is my specialty. Um, England has always been slightly behind. And um, I think that's for varying reasons. But I'd say um, it's probably turned around within the last... I'd say maybe 20 years, I don't know, maybe a little bit longer. Um, I don't want to be unfair on the, on the English because, but it definitely has seen a change, you're right. And also that change has been driven by um, people being more conscious of their health um, through social media and their smiles and their appearance. Um, so this has all changed, you know, education's changed. Um, we're more aware of, you know, health problems, people more aware of teeth problems, um, gum problems. So education, um, access to social media, um, education, this is all like it really fueled um, an improvement in dental health and also dentists now, um, you know, where we are obliged to educate our patients, which does help as well. Brilliant, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I think that takes us to apologize and answer your questions. We apologize. We will be doing it again very, very shortly, but we're going to crack on with our live premiere. Big thank you to Dr. Sina. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Big thank you to Dr. Sarah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. And now let's switch over to the premiere of a lipoma on someone's face. Till next time, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. <laughs> you can see a parasite on the scans. I just saw that comment. <laughs> <laughs>